GTII, we may have some more validations to handle uh, within that same support level that we were looking at around 103 to 102 uh, before we can continue to the upside. And there could be another very unknown metric to kind of uh, look at before we can make our decisions here, right? So let's go ahead and get this started now. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. Once again, this is Arca coming at you with a GTII technicals, raw price action, and statistical threat of analysis on this Thursday. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community in Discord called Arca Bulls. With that said... Let's dive right into the charts. Okay, so what I mean by an unknown metric is is actually this. So GTII, you guys, there there is a there, there is a large amount of investors within GTII who genuinely who genuinely believe in the longevity of the company in general, right? I'm talking about uh, they really believe in it as, as a long hold, regardless of a squeeze or not, right? So. Uh, because we have that kind of intelligent investor within, uh, you know, that that population within the GTII asset, we have to take into consideration what the broader markets are doing as well, regardless of the fact that GTII is OTC and it's uh, considered to be decentralized, right? So uh, for that, let's go ahead and take a look at the SPY. Okay, so first of all, the SPY is creating... Uh, this is more of a new formation, right? And I, it's really, I just uh, don't like formation analysis too much. But if the sentiment believes in it, then there could be, uh, you know, if enough psychology believes in it, then yes, it would implement uh, accordingly, right? So in this case, what you're looking at here is a bearish diamond, right? So, and not only do we have a bearish diamond formation here on the daily of the SPY, but we also have a drive of regular bearish divergence printing on momentum, right? So we're getting that higher high on momentum represented by this red line, and we're getting a um, a lower high on the, uh, you know, represented by this red line here on the RSI representing momentum. Okay, so that's already giving us some bearish signals for a downside, right? So if we are kind of frothy up here, we I mean, we've been rallying the SPY for days and days, right? So we, we got up to a high of about 417.62, 4, uh, right? Right at about here. So we got that high already. So there could be a breather to take into account. When this happens, uh, investors or bulls or whatever may actually uh, start removing risk from their position in hopes to gaining a better entry uh, for the longer run, right? So this is something that we have to kind of keep an eye out for. So another thing is here is, is that the stochastic momentum is building a symmetrical triangle during a downtrend, which is usually a bearish signal, okay? And we do have a regression line here that looks like it may be starting to get respected soon enough, right? So another thing that we have to keep in mind here is volatility. Volatility is in fact starting to diminish again. So the, so the lower we go into this critical zone, that means that there is less volume uh, being presented in the trade, less shares being traded, meaning just uh, the price action just, uh, you know, kind of declining, right? So uh, there are several things to look at other than just GTII. But to tell you the truth, the pressures that GTII is facing towards the downside and towards the upside, I, I know that we got that, you know, we got that uh, person buying about 8 million, uh, whatever, just yesterday, right? So we got that nice pump to the upside. Uh, but a lot of the downside pressures that we're looking at could be represented by macro sentiment, right? Or the micro, or the macro psychology. And in this case, yeah, we have some downside to look at, right? But the good thing is, is that we tested again that 103 today, which is confluent with our bottom side of our Gaussian channel and the buy daily here. And another really good thing here is too, right? Is just remember, this is just a candle analysis. We need so much more to validate what could be. Uh, happening for for the future, right? So, GTII is now in the process of actually we just closed this. Oh yeah, the buy daily just closed. Okay, so we closed a, a bullish <laughs> inverted hammer. Okay, so usually when we have a downtrend and then we have a massive break of structure, uh, when it looks like just like this candle here, that represents a potential reversal of price action in general, right? So I mean y you can. Uh, uh, you can look at that for you. You can look anywhere on Google for that. You know, you, you can uh, let me see if I can just uh, bring up a quick little example here. So we'll uh, we'll put here. 
inverted hammer on Google, right? I'm on my other screen here, uh, a reversal, right? So let's just go ahead and search that real quick and see what we can do here, okay? So where do we have, yeah, this could be, the heck was that? Somebody knocking on my window or something, right? So yeah, let, let me, let, yeah, let me actually just do that instead. I'll show you here exactly what I mean. Let me copy that and bring the screen over to uh, over to the other side. It, man, come on, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. If this thing takes too long, uh, then we'll just, you know what, guys? Screw it. Let's just go ahead and uh, continue on our analysis here, right? So I'm just going to give this one more try. If it doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. And yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Good. It did happen. Okay, so very, very cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add that picture here to the screen where we are and uh, show you what I mean. Okay, so yeah, when, let me just pull this out here. There we go. So when you're looking at an inverted hammer, that usually signals a reversal of price action, right? So these are what we're looking for, right? So just, just like these, they can appear like regular hammers and they can also appear inverted, right? So now going back to our to our uh, uh, chart here, you can see here that after a downtrend, we have a massive hammer, right? So uh, that usually indicates a potential upside trend. And another thing to kind of keep in mind here uh, as well is, is that we have a, let me see, can I block this? Yes, nice, we could. Uh, we have increasing volume, right? So when we have increasing volume and uh, and also a trend a trend reversal signal, then yeah, this divergence here usually ends up as a potential v shape recovery. the The validator for this candle here would essentially be the next one. So the next candle that we start printing here, depending on how we print that buy daily candle, would be kind of the uh, uh, validator for a continuation to the upside or an invalidator for a continuation to the downside. Right. So that's at least that is a, a that's a very good sign. <laughs> OK, so let's go ahead and move on to the uh, next chart here. So, yeah, you guys. So yet again, we you know, we have that uh, by daily inverted hammer. But also, please notice that we are still well within the uh, bullish formation. Right. And we actually attempted to penetrate the the top side of course we faced a resistance and we came back down which is absolutely normal right so in other words that would be expected actually since we have test one two and that would be test number three with the biggest capitulation right before a continuation to the upside as well uh, we we also have to keep into the consideration that we close uh, as far you know when we get to 65 to 70 percent to the apex of the triangle that would be usually when we face a, a type of breakout right another thing here is that on the buy daily momentum you can see here that uh the ema3 which is the leading indicator is starting to kind of pivot here so that would usually uh be the one to influence the shorter the longer time frame sma14 to start that upside pivot as well so we can see that there's already some weakness coming in with increasing volatility so yet again, kind of proving that the increasing volume on the buy daily versus the divergence of price action leading to the downside paired with uh, <clears throat> paired with uh, inverted hammer, also paired with the fact that we're approaching the seventy five or the seventy percent zone of the you know to the apex of the triangle with test number three, and then having test number four being the true breakout, all of those things kind of indicate that we could be just validating our current support before exploding to the upside, right? So um, on the weekly time frame, guys, we're going to be over in 19 hours and 50 minutes. So just about 20 hours, we're going to close this weekly, and it could actually close as a huge indecision candle, right? So it, it looks kind of like the bulls are really – uh, they're really kind of taking into account what's happening here. So failure, failure could it, it failure is in the cards here, but we are kind of teetering around that area right now, right? So the last thing we want is to start closing, uh, to start closing beneath our current low of 103, right? We don't want to start closing candles down here, or else that would be a complete invalidation of this entire work that we've done. Okay, so let's go ahead and. Uh, move on to the analysis actually let's just move on to the last part and we can uh, close this up right so yeah just that, just like we expected guys we do have some pressures that are leading to a potential downside continuation right so what i would like to point out however is that that is that the bi hourly and let's see the four hour let's see let's see let's see 
Come on, come on. Load any date. My goodness. Okay, yeah. So the bi hourly and the four hour are suggesting a potential support being found. Okay, so meaning that we have this upside slight pivot happening on the 30 minute, then it goes into the bi hourly and bleeds into that little bit of an upside. And then the bi hourly leads into the four hour that's now forcing it to correct a little more. Now, as we jump in to the six hour, let's take a look. So the six hour, yeah, it looks like it's starting to correct very little here. And then, of course, in the eight hour, it still hasn't corrected, right? It still has a down, uh, has, still has a downside. So you can see what I'm talking about, right? That cascading effect, that domino effect, we definitely want for the shorter time frames to impact the correction of our larger term time frames so that we can then correct and continue on to the upside. Okay, so yeah, we still have we still have a, a little bit of downside to go, which could be indicative of testing and retesting that 103 area to about, I would say, the top side of about 108, right, which is confluent with the 107 on the one spot 618. Okay, you guys, so we have to kind of look out for those targets, and then as soon as we validate those bottom sides, then we can continue on to our upside and make the and make the noise that GTII deserves, right? So uh, please remember, first and foremost, that I am not a financial advisor. Take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy or sell any assets whatsoever, okay, you guys? I need you to do your own due diligence and everything will be cool, cool. But with that said, I wish you well. A very, very good night. And I will catch you at the bell. Manana. Adios.